Batteries are electrochemical cells. In this video, I'm going to focus on primary cells or non-rechargeable batteries, and we're going to start by having a look at a zinc carbon cell. The outer casing of this cell is, unsurprisingly, made of zinc. And this is where oxidation happens. Zinc is oxidized to form zinc ions and electrons. The electrode potential for that half cell is minus 0 0.80 volts. And these electrons are going to flow around an, uh, an external circuit powering our motor or our TV remote to the positive or reduction half cell. And that is what is happening here where I have a carbon rod. Ammonium ions from the electrolyte are reduced on the surface of the carbon rod. They gain electrons. So first of all, we've got our electrolyte in this part of the cell. And my electrolyte is a paste of ammonium chloride and water. And water. So on the surface of the carbon rod, we have got ammonium ions gaining electrons, hence that is the reduction or the positive half cell, to form ammonia and hydrogen. And the standard electrode potential for this reaction is plus 0 0.70 volts. You will have noticed in the reduction half cell that our products are both gases. Now, clearly we don't want the pressure to build up and our battery to explode, so what happens to them? The ammonia dissolves in the water of the electrolyte. The hydrogen is oxidized to water by manganese oxide. So in the center here, I have got manganese for oxide and powdered carbon. And here we get oxidation of hydrogen to form water. There are two obvious problems with this battery or cell, um, other than the fact that it's not rechargeable. The first of, is that as oxidation happens, the zinc casing is going to get thinner and thinner and thinner. So we have a problem of leakage. And the ammonium chloride electrolyte is highly corrosive which is why if you're using these types of batteries, you need to check them regularly and remove them from your appliances so that electrolyte doesn't leak out and cause damage. The second primary cell I'd like to have a look at is the long life alkaline battery. It's got a very similar setup. We've got a brass current collector in the center. We've got the steel cover and we have an iron conducting separator between our oxidation and our reduction half cell. So let's take a look at the oxidation half cell first. Here we have powdered zinc and potassium hydroxide. So we have a source of hydroxide ions, hence the alkaline part of the name. And the half reaction that's happening here is zinc plus hydroxide ions going to form zinc oxide and electrons. And the standard electrode potential for that half cell is minus 1.28 volts. So we're losing electrons. It's still an oxidation reaction. And those electrons, once again, are going to flow through an external circuit doing work back to the positive or reduction half cell. The reduction half cell is happening here. This part of the cell is made up of a mixture of manganese for oxide and powdered carbon. And the manganese in the manganese oxide is reduced by the gain of electrons. So we have manganese for oxide, plus water, 
plus electrons. Slightly weird way of writing this, going to form Mn2O3 and hydroxide ions. And the standard electrode potential for this half reaction is plus 0.15 volts. So we've got reduction half cell, oxidation half cell. This cell has, is far longer lived, up to maybe 16 times as longer lived as our first version of the zinc carbon cell. And also we haven't got the problem of zinc casing being slowly corroded, we haven't got um, the corrosive electrolyte leaking out, and we don't have the production of gases. So in reality, it's actually a simpler setup. If this has been useful, hit the subscribe button, the effortless way to support your studies. And by clicking the link in the blurb below, it will take you straight to the Crunch Chemistry School, where you'll find all the resources you need to get that A-star grade at A-level. Together, we can do this.